Have you ever wondered what problems people can experience when they stop taking their antidepressants? Stay tuned and find out. The title of this video is called How to Quit Antidepressants Very Slowly. But we, of course, have to tell our joke, and this one uh, a, a YouTuber sent in to me. Uh, why did the snake lose his case in court? Well, he didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> I feel sorry for that snake, but anyway, we must go on. So, today's topic. I did a video many, many years ago called Is There a Time to Stop Taking Antidepressants? And in that video I said, Antidepressants uh, don't work for everybody, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, many people they don't help, but there are some people they do. So the question becomes, after maybe uh, six months or a year or two years of taking these drugs, feeling better, having your symptoms relieved, a person will say to themselves, well, is this a good time to stop or should I stop? And uh, that's what we talked about in, in that video. So in some cases, a person will say, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm feeling pretty good. These, these medications are working. The side effects are nil or maybe minimal. So, you know, I'm just going to keep going on and take them indefinitely. But in other cases, people will say, you know, I'm doing a lot of other things besides doing these drugs. I'm doing Douglas's brain maintenance program. I'm exercising. I'm sleeping well. I'm eating well. I'm doing affirmations. I'm meditating. I'm doing mindfulness. So how do I know, you know, what's doing what? Maybe these, these mindfulness or these lifestyle habits uh, are really, really doing the trick. And maybe the drug is sort of not helping anymore. So maybe I should get off the drug. And so they decide to. Well, so far, so good. I mean, whether to keep taking your antidepressants or stop them, it's an individual choice. But what most people don't realize is if you've been on these drugs for a long period of time, getting off them is easier said than done. This is because while most psychiatrists are very well trained in how to prescribe med medications and get people started, they have little or no training on how to get them to stop or, or how to you know, wean them off them. This brings me to an article in the New York Times that caught my attention recently with this title. How to quit antidepressants? Very slowly, doctors say. But what's really provocative is the subtitle, which reads, Mustering Solid Evidence Two researchers have denounced the standard psychiatric guidelines for how to best wean patients from depression medications. Well, it turns out that patients who go off their antidepressants too quickly can experience severe withdrawal symptoms, including insomnia, high levels of anxiety, and something called brain zaps, which many of my clients have told me about. They just define this as sensations of electric shock in the brain. And there's actually a name for this process. It's called the discontinuation syndrome. Psychiatrists have actually given this name when people come off these drugs and they get these horrible symptoms. And for years, uh, they have been downplayed by the psychiatric community as simply being uh, symptoms of underlying mood problems. Now a pair of British researchers have broken ranks with established psychiatry in that country and have argued that, uh, they did the paper, by the way, in, in Lancet Psychiatry, if you want to look it up, and they argued that any responsible withdrawal regimen should take place over months and even years, not the standard four weeks, that is the general you know, advice that psychiatrists give. There's a guy named Mark Horowitz who was one of the authors of this paper. He's a big shot. He, he is the research fellow at Britain's National Health Service. And he says, I know people who, uh, who can stop suddenly and have no side effects, no problem. But he says, other people have to pull apart their capsules bead by bead to basically go off these drugs without any problems. And we now have provided the science to back up what we've seen all along. So what is this research that Dr. Horowitz cites? Well, in one study in 2010, I was, yep, one study in 2010, uh, Japanese researchers found that 78% of the people who try to get off Paxil experience severe withdrawal symptoms. And boy, my patients, my patients, my clients have been telling me this for years. Uh, Paxil is a really, really hard medication to get off of. However, when they went ahead and they spread the time out over nine months to a number of years, then only 6% 
of the patients had withdrawal symptoms from 78% down to 6%. In another study uh, conducted by the Dutch just last year, 2018, they found that 70% of the people who had difficulty getting off Effexor and Paxil were able to do so by uh, safely following an extended tapering regimen, reducing their dosage by smaller and smaller increments until they were down to 1 40th of the original amount. Well, my takeaway from these studies is pretty clear. I'm on two uh, medications right now, and if one day I decide to go off them, I plan personally to work with my doctor to taper these things off over a long period of time just to reduce the risk for me of any unwanted side effects. What I like about the study is that it validates patients' reports of their own experiences. Here's a quote from a psychiatrist. She says, uh, it's tremendously frustrating when patients describe a different experience than the physicians expect and don't feel they're being heard. Hey, I can relate. <laughs> uh, back at the beginning, 1996, I took this medication called Effexor, one dose, and I was catapulted into an agitated depression, later diagnosed as akathisia. I went back to my shrink and I said, you know, I'm a wreck. He said, no, 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 you, you only took 37.5 milligrams of Vexor. Not possible, not possible. I said, hey man, I know my nervous system. I'm pacing back and forth hitting myself. And I went from shrink to shrink to try to tell them what had happened to me and nobody believed me. Turned out years later, something called akathisia, this restlessness and pacing was shown to be a side effect of certain antidepressants. So. I was right, but nobody believed me at the time. So if anybody out there is thinking about uh, stopping your antidepressants, you might want to think about working with a practitioner who's had experience guiding people through this process, especially over a long period of time. Now there's a local practitioner here in Portland who wrote a wonderful book about this process that's highly regarded among at least uh, people like me who are lay people. Uh, it's called A Harm Reduction Guide to Coming Off Psychiatric Drugs. And there's a free download of this book. You can go to um, www.theicarusproject.net and you'll find a way to download the book. And if any of you do so and you do apply it, let me know what happens. Let me know if it's helpful. And for that matter, please tell me your experiences now of any time in the past you've tried to come off antidepressants uh, if there were withdrawal symptoms, maybe not, but whatever your experience was, I'd love to hear about it. So, uh, again, I want to say that uh, coming off of drugs, psychiatric drugs, is no easy task. Uh, it's harder than most people thought it was, but there are protocols out there, and there are people out there who can help you. This has been Douglas Block. I thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your tuning in. Uh, if you liked it, give it a like, and if you wanted to ask me a question or give me feedback, do so in the comments section or simply email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. Uh, this uh, channel succeeds uh, partially because of the subscribers that we have. If you'd like to become one and be notified whenever I do a new video or a live chat, uh, click on my photo. You'll be taken to the subscriber page. The first thing you do is click on the button and then there's a bell to the upper right. Click on that and that's how you get notified. And if you'd like to become a contributor to this channel, on a sustaining basis, click on the Patreon link. Again, in the closing credits, you'll be taken to my website, and there you'll be able to either uh, donate $2 a month, $5 a month, whatever suits you, to give this channel the funds it needs to keep on going and producing this material, which I know helps a lot of people because of all the letters I get. So I appreciate your tuning in. I appreciate all your support. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much. Thank you.